Oh, one coming in on a low strafing one, actually, by the looks of it. Yes, um, this is the model as of a year and a half ago. There have been some slight changes since then, but the, the basic thing is fine. This is thin henge as it will look on the landscape when it's built. Um, at this time we didn't have the, the design of the end of the avenue. Now we do have this and you'll be seeing that uh, in a diagram later on, but yeah, basically this is Stonehenge. It's it looks very like Stonehenge, and yet it is designed specifically for all of the phenomena, the celestial and and physical phenomena, phenomena that uh, that happen at Longleat. Yeah. What what kind of uh, numbers are we talking about in terms of stones and what kind of stones? Um. Okay. We've got here about 240 stones, ranging from the largest one, the Grand uh, Trilithon here, uh, probably about, uh, well, including the, the length that's embedded in the earth, probably about 25 feet long, uh, by about 7 foot wide, by about 4 foot wide, to the smallest stones uh, in the central ring here, which are maybe about three foot in diameter. Um, they range from about, I would imagine, about 70 tonnes to about one tonne. Um, instead, Thin Henge is designed uh, to, to hold within itself the spirit of Stonehenge as much as possible. Obviously it's got to be different because now is now and then was then. And in Stonehenge, the large stones were made of sarsen. Now, these stones were deposited by the glaciers um, millions of years ago around the area of Avebury and Marlborough. Now, these stones, there are still stones there, sarsen stones there, but they're protected. And so uh, we won't be able to find any. However, I'm hoping, I do want sarsen as part of this design, because it, uh, the sarsen stone is beautiful, it's sort of pinky, orangey, creamy, uh, it's, well, it's, it's really, really hard stone, and it has a wonderful personality, and obviously it's a lot to do with the spirit of Stonehenge. I want it here. So if possible, I would like to find 18 stones that would go in the innermost ring, uh, to, to, to hold that, that lovely energy of Stonehenge with us. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to find them by the sides of fields where far, uh, farmers have ploughed the field and pulled these big stones to one side and plonked them in a heap. I'm hoping that I'll be allowed to, to pick them up. Um, also, a very important type of stone uh, in Stonehenge are these two rings, the smaller rings inside, and they're made of something what's known, which is known as blue stones, and they are thought to come from the Priscelli Mountains in South Wales. Now, I've been to the Priscelli Mountains too, found loads of them quite close to the uh, to the mine where it is thought that the Stonehenge stones came from. Um, again, uh, they'd been pulled away from fields, put into huge piles. Now, at the moment, we're not totally sure if we can pick them up. That has to be uh, found out, researched, negotiated. But I'm really, really hoping we can get a small ring of sarsens and a small ring of blue stones. Uh, 
Now the large stones, they're massive. Now, a hundred years ago, there would have been a hundred quarries in Britain where we could have got that stone from. Uh, because they got each stone out individually um, using water and wood or black powder. Um, and they would have been able to get these stones out in one go. But what's happened now, the easy way of getting stone out of mountains is to blow it out with dynamite. And what happens when, that ha when you use dynamite is that every stone within, I don't know, half a mile or something, gets these hairline cracks all the way through them. And, and uh, so you, even if you get a stone out which looks solid, once the frost and the ice gets in and, and everything, it'll just shatter after a few years. So, in Britain we've found two quarries that couldn't get stones out this size. And there's one up in uh, Derbyshire, uh, near Matlock, and uh, we've gone into quite a lot of detail with these, these, these people, the miners up there. Um, the stone is grit stone, which is like a hard sandstone. It's very beautiful in the way that it's white, with lovely swirls of colour inside. Um, however, it is sandstone, and you know when you, you're building stone circles, you, you have to think in thousands of years, and sandstone, well, it'll dissolve. <laughs> now, there's another quarry, and I'm really hoping that uh, we can we can get the stone from there down in Cornwall and this quarry it has white granite which is basically white with flecks of black and of grey very crystalline there's seams of beautiful quartz crystals running through the stone and well it, it is so energetic it is so full of life that stone I really hope uh, that uh, we'll be able to build the thin hens, the large stones out of the white granite. Um, the outside stones, we're not sure yet. We're waiting to see how the cards fall. These could be white granite, they could be blue stones, they could be a selection of different types of stones from different parts of this country. So we're honouring if you like, the mineral beings, the rock beings of all of the country, having different colours, different shapes. We don't know yet, but uh, it, it will sort of uh, happen as it will. It's funny, though, when I was at Stonehenge the other day in the shop, they've got these uh, yes, I know. modelettes, I know. Yeah. 15 yeah. quid a, a go. Yeah. You know? yeah. This has probably been about, uh, I don't know, it's quite a lot. Well, well, I'm thinking of... 50 quid or something, yeah. 100 quid to sell it. Well... If you were going to sell them that size in the, in the souvenir shop, which is probably impractical. Yes, that's no, no, be small, but I... Yes, I'm thinking quite seriously, you know, me doing the models. Mm. You know, I'd love to do the models in my own way, you know, and have them for sale some set. So... Yeah. About here is a tree, and there is the stone. So you get the midsummer sunset, but then, uh, but then, uh, this stone, the 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 sunrise comes over clay hill there, hits the stone, and then gets reflected straight in there. So it will be on this side of that energy be. So so if I, if this is a working stone circle. And I enter, and that is the point where all these sunrises and sunsets and things would be visible from. Yeah, so, okay. yeah I just wonder if you could um, just yeah. point a few things. Yeah, just, um, to start with, huh? uh, just ask yourself to help things up. Run your fingers slowly around the outer. Um, try and turn it on to the outer ring. What about now? Are you running go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. just to sort of slowly. Right, so these will all be shaped, and on the inside and on the outside, uh, they'll all be shaped into this beautiful circular shape, including these lintels as well, on top of the trilithons. Uh, it's really important that the geometry is exact. Now, this central point there uh, is the point from which all of these 
all of these foresights, all these marker stones, they mark the sunrises, the special sunrises and sunsets throughout the year, and they're visible from that stone. So that you could call the altar stone. It's sitting in a, a very hollow scoop stone which will hold water. I find it really important. This is a solar temple. It's circular and it's, uh, it's here to, to honour the midsummer sunrise, most of all. It's completely facing here. So I find it's really important to have water there as a balance. Um, these are the heel stones and you can see now already with the sun rising it's quite uh, it's it's not the same as at midsummer sunrise but already you can see these two amazing shadows so at midsummer sunrise you can if you can imagine the sun coming directly down the avenue and these two shadows coming right in here on either side of the central egg and the light will shine straight through onto the egg so uh, you know I'm hoping that this will be a spectacular visual experience for everyone who is here it must be real it must be visual it must not be just a um, something that you think about it's something that must make you go oh, you know really you know, uh, there have been many sunrises and sunsets at stone circles that all my hair's gone on end. There's not much left of it now, but... And I want that to happen here. I want people to really experience it in a very physical and real way. It's funny, because um, people felt that people had been attracted, obviously, towards the sunlight for hundreds of thousands or whatever, since whenever, year dot. Um, and in, in a sense, if you go to some of the churches like Salisbury Cathedral, uh, they've kind of replaced the incoming sun or put a barrier of a stained glass window That's right. between the incoming sun and yes. and the people, the congregation. Yes. Whereas here, the barrier, it's just the direction of the stones, the direction of the light is kind of like coordinated, or sort of pointed by the stones. That's right. I mean, this is a temple for what happens naturally. There are no barriers. The light and everything, I mean, if that's a wall, it's got breaks in it all the way around. It doesn't have a roof. Because it needs to be in contact with the cycles of nature. It needs to be in contact with the stars and the winds and the sun and, and all that sort of thing. Otherwise, it's just, I'm interested in what is here and our birthright. I'm interested in, in what is given to us by birth, not which is um, created for us to enjoy. Uh, I, 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 I want the sun, I want the stars, I want the wind, I want the water. Uh, I want to feel things on my skin, you know. Uh, uh, and and this, this, this is dedicated to the cycles of nature. We've lost that. And I believe that people are, are, are very unhappy because of it. I want people to, to, to be able to come here and, and feel things on their skin and see the sun and uh, to experience the beauty of, of what's here naturally, basically. How did you get that scar on your forehead? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you put ink around it. In <laughs> red ink. Well, I got in a fight last night. <laughs> <clears throat> just from that corner, right across. Um, yeah.